The final one that I'm going to deal with here, models for just societies, we said that capitalism is a one of the three biggest problems, is how do we create societies where you don't have rich and poor? How do you do that? Now, we've had revolutions in the 20th century that proclaimed their desire to do that. And they generally called themselves socialists. And their goal was to redistribute wealth equally. That's what they said. But when they came into power, very often an elite was in control. And very often they were reproducing the uh, systems that they had before. In Russia, uh, Stalin, and I think no telling what Lenin would have done. He was one of the leaders of the revolution and he not died early. Stalin was a pure gangster and he killed a whole lot of his people. I, maybe more than um, the Germans killed in World War II. The Russians lost 27 million people in World War II. But he was behaving like a czar. But he was coming up off a family system of patriarchy in which the people of Russia had been ground into the dust. And women were really abused and mistreated. Alcoholism is ripe in Russia for a lot of good reasons. Life is miserable. It's been better lately, but it's still not what it could be. Russia should be the third or fourth ranking power in the world. But for a lot of reasons, and bad leadership is one of them, they aren't. But the key point is the so-called movements for change in the 20th century, um, they claim to be about redistributing wealth, uh, didn't succeed very well in doing that and very often ended up with dictatorships. In the case of China, they have chosen capitalism as their way to uh, take 400 million people out of poverty, but also create great wealth disparities. So the question is in thinking about models for just societies, what do we have to offer? And say, I would argue this, the reason why, the main reason why socialism failed in the West, that is in Russia in particular, is that the West, A, doesn't have a caring culture. That is, humanism is not at the heart of Western culture. And they do not have a history of sharing economically. And so to create something on a theory isn't good enough. So what do we have? We have a history of sharing that is called communalism. That means the air, the land, and the water is owned by no one, but can be shared. And that the responsibility of the person who shares the land, air, and water is to leave it in better condition than they received it. Native Americans would impose capital punishment on a person who defecated in a stream of water because they're poisoning the stream for all creatures. So in the villages of Africa, the communal ethos still prevails. And in fact, in Africa, if you buy land in Africa, it's usually for only so many years. That's a compromise. Before, you couldn't buy it at all, but now it might be a 99-year lease. After that, it reverts back to the king of the village or you know, to the people, and the kings never own land. In America, we couldn't practice uh, this idea of the land and air and water being shared because you're under capitalism. But we had the ethos of sharing. Ella Baker's grandfather owned a large number of acres of land. He subdivided it among his family. And when people were hungry in his community, he would get a loan from the bank to give people money. And then when he could raise the money again, he'd pay off that loan. But that was a communal ethos or we survived depressions by sharing when white people were starving. That's the communal ethos. So we need a modern form of communalism. And by the way, 
the most important gain of the Mexican Revolution under Emiliano Zapata um, and Pancho Villa. Zapata leading the revolution in the South, Villa in the North. The most important gain was the gain of communalism because uh, the Mexican is a mixture of African, Native American, and Spanish. Fund more Indian than anything else, but those two as well. The African and Native American both share a communal value. And so the one thing enshrined in the Mexican constitution was the right of farmers to have their own land coming under the communal ethos. But when Bill Clinton came in with NAFTA, he ended that. Bill Clinton has done more damage to the planet than almost any president. You hear me? And so one reason you had a lot of Mexicans coming across the border is they could no longer compete with US multinationals. And as a result, they had to go elsewhere to you know, make money to feed their families. So communalism was a game. Today, in terms of rebuilding economics in the black community, one of the best things to do is cooperative economics. And I'm, and I'm not opposing blacks who own their own businesses. Uh, that's the second largest employer for blacks. And we've lost 40% of our businesses through COVID, 